The first thing you want to do when you are preparing to paint baseboards is wipe down the baseboard. I just use warm water. And then once it's dry, you can start to fill the nail holes. I use this stuff, dry Dex spackling. It goes on pink and then when it dries, it will turn white. So I just put a little bit on the nail holes. And then also where the miter is for the quarter round. Then when it's dry in about 15, 20 minutes, it'll turn white. Then you can take some very fine sandpaper and sand it smooth. Just filling in the, the miter crack. So this trim has been on here for a while and just never, uh, never filled in or painted nice and white. And the quarter round was added on after. After the spackling has turned white, then you want to take some sandpaper, just some light grit sandpaper. This is 180 grit. And just lightly sand off the rough areas of the spackle of the spackle. Smooth that out, smooth out where the nail holes were. If there's any other spots on the trim, you can just smooth those areas out as well. Sometimes there's just some rough areas. And after you have that smoothed out, just take a damp rag again and wipe off that dust. So after the trim is nice and dry, what you want to do is use a white paintable uh, caulking. Get to the English side here. So it's a brilliant white paintable caulking. And uh, I like to just fill in the small crack that uh, occurs when the, the quarter round is put up against the baseboard. So it just uh, eliminates that crack. So what you want to do is just take a very small, small bead, run it along the length of the baseboard. And then just take your finger and smooth, smooth it out. Now you're going to want to also uh, do it to the the top where it meets up against the wall if you are going to be painting uh, the wall as well. So same thing, just uh, just to eliminate the small grip, the small gap in between the baseboard and the wall so it looks nice and nice and clean. Take your finger, smooth it out, and then you want that to uh, to dry so you'll probably want to leave that for uh, a couple hours before you go and put any primer on it.
Now that the caulking is nice and hard, nice and dry, you want to apply some primer. I like to use the Bullseye, the Zinzer product, uh, Bullseye 1, 2, 3. It is an excellent primer. And so what we'll do is put on one coat of this. So you just want to smooth it out nice and smooth. Make sure you get a, a decent brush. Spend a, a little bit of money on the brush because you definitely get what you pay for. Just want to put on a nice amount. Now, if you're working in a home where there's carpet, then you might want to put something down to uh, make sure that you don't get any on it. Now, I do this all the time, so I don't usually need to put anything down. But accidents can happen. But if it's a hardwood floor and you get a little bit on the floor, it's easy to clean up. Just want to run that nice and close to the floor. So you just go over it a few times. Make sure you get it nice and covered. Don't want any runs, so primer dries fairly quick. But you don't want to you want to make sure you don't put on too much. Yeah. Now within about an hour, that'll be nice and dry, and I'll probably put on the first coat of the trim paint in maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Now that the, the baseboard is nice and dry, and uh, free of any rough areas, what you want to do is put on your first coat of white latex door and trim paint. Now there's a lot of different brands that you can use. I use a Seco uh, door and trim paint. It has a really nice pearl finish. So that's what I use. Now using a smaller brush sometimes is a little bit easier for applying the correct amount of paint and just for the edging. Now what I'll do is always paint the baseboard first before the wall. I find it much easier to paint the wall after. So you want to just get a decent amount of paint on your brush and then just like the primer you're gonna just uh, put it on nice and even, nice and smooth. You don't want to put too much because you'll end up getting some paint runs. Just nice even strokes with the brush. And don't worry about getting it on the wall because uh, when you do the wall color, you'll be able to clean that up. It is very important just to make sure you have enough paint on your brush, but definitely not too much. I usually put on about that much. There's nothing worse than coming back and seeing all a bunch of paint runs. Now, if you don't do a lot of painting, you may want to put 
something down to protect the floor. Um, it might make it a little easier. I can just run my brush along the bottom of the cord around without getting any on the floor. But that comes from a lot of practice. Once you have the first coat applied, you're going to want this to dry for a few hours. I think they recommend uh, six to eight hours before applying your second coat. I know I have put on the second coat maybe three or four hours later and never had a problem. I think they just want to make sure that you don't put it on too soon. So then once that's done, I just like to run my brush along. Helps to eliminate any stoppage marks. Gives you a nice smooth finish. All right, so we'll leave that for a few hours. Then we'll come back to put on the second coat. All right, well, I went ahead and gave the baseboards the second coat. So now, after I've waited a number of hours, I'm going to start the edging. Now, I use this uh, frog tape. The yellow stuff is for delicate um, trim work. There's also the green tape, but I prefer using uh, this one. It prevents the, the paint from bleeding through. Um, it is quite expensive. It depends where you live. Um, here it's about $10 for a roll. What you want to do is just put it a little bit past on top of the, the baseboard and then just make sure that you are just in that crease where the wall meets up to the top of the, the baseboard. Then just go along little by little. tear off a little bit at the end here and then just with your thumb guide it into that crease so you get a nice a nice straight line you just follow these principles for around the rest of the room and just take your finger make sure it's nice and tight if it's not and it's sticking up in some places, then the paint will bleed through. Now I'm using a, an, another Seco product for the paint. It is a matte finish, so it's, it's not glossy, it's quite flat. It's a nice, nice finish. So once again, I like to use the smaller brushes for the edging. So if you use a heavier brush, sometimes you can just end up putting on too much paint. Get about that much on and just run it along the wall. Nice even brush strokes. And just kind of feather out the paint. And then once that's done, I like to take the tape off right away. Since I'm trying to get this all done here today, I don't want to pull too quickly. Um, the paint should be nice and dry. I've given it a, quite a long time, but 
just to prevent any paint from lifting off the baseboard, I'm going to go nice and slow. And there you go, you have a nice straight line. And then for this part, I'll roll the paint on the wall. So for the rolling application, get a, a good roller cage and then a, a good roller sleeve. You want at least 10 millimeter, that's a good thickness to put on a nice consistent coat. Sorry about the squeaks. I use, uh, I paint so often that um, I go through quite a few rollers in a year and they start to uh, get a little squeaky when you wash them out. So there you go. Now I will let that dry for maybe an hour, an hour and a half. And then I'll show you uh, just how to put on the second coat just to have it nice and finished As you can see this is nice and dry now and what I usually do for the last coat Because you really need to put on two good coats uh, for for nice coverage so you can just faintly see a little bit through the the gray here uh, so there's no need to retape the trim because you have a nice nice line there you don't have to get right down to the bottom but I just get as close as I can so just follow that as close as you can. You don't want to go past the, the straight line, but it gives you something that you can follow. Getting down as close as possible. Smooth that out. There, now that finishes it nice. Then I'll just grab my roller and give it one more coat. As you can see, the second coat is almost completely dry. And uh, we have a nice, clean, straight line along the baseboard. So yeah, that is how you paint baseboard. Uh, look for more videos on this channel uh, for more painting tips as I am planning on uh, making a number of videos and uh, if you'd like please subscribe.